guys, Jamison Redding here with the Road Trip Angler. And today I wanted to give you a quick kind of comparison video between the NRS Pike Pro and the CUDA 126. They're both 38 inches wide. They both have three chambers, two tubes on the outside, and a drop stitch deck that gives you a lot of rigidity. They're both very stable. You can stand in both of them and they're pretty close in price. There's a few different ways to buy these boats. The CUDA is available in that 10 foot, eight inch long package, which is actually called the CUDA 106. And it's also available as we have it here as the 12 foot, six inch long CUDA 126. There's a hundred dollar difference, so $13.95 to $14.95 for the one we have here. Whereas the Pike only comes in 12 foot, eight inches long, which they actually call the Pike 126. But it is available in two different packages. We have it here in the Pro package, which has those Yakutite accessories and the paddle. Now in the standard package, it is $13.95. So at 12 foot, eight inches long and $13.95 compared to similar in length size in the CUDA, the CUDA is about $100 more. So $17.95 as the Pike Pro sits here and $14.95 as the CUDA 126 sits here. They both have those three chambers. You have two outer tubes. You have a deck that has the drop stitch technology from NRS, which allows it to be super rigid and inflated to eight PSI. They both come with that backpack and they both come with a pump and a patch kit and the same fin. You also get the foot pegs on both boats. I do like the placement a little bit better of where they are on the Pike Pro because it is more of a sit on side. Those foot pegs are more where they would traditionally be on most any kayak where because this kayak being a sit on top and really more of a almost stand up paddleboard style kayak, they're kind of on the bottom or the deck of the boat instead of being on the sides. I thought that might be a problem, but it really isn't. I tend to put my heels on these foot pegs on this boat, and I put the forefoot of my feet on the Pike Pro's foot pegs. The next thing that I would say is different, while this one is a few inches longer, they are the same width. Both of these are 38 inches wide, but, and why, I really don't know. This boat is 48 pounds, and this one's only 31. However, at that 48 pounds, the Pike and Pike Pro have a capacity rating of 375 pounds, where the 31 pound CUDA 126 has a capacity of 300. Now, honestly, I think both of those are conservative and I really think the CUDA is rated very conservatively because I weigh 220 pounds and carrying my black pack full of all the fishing tackle that I bring and my rods, I know I'm pushing that 300 pound mark and I can tell no difference in the performance of this boat at that rating. But what I will say when I had both of these out on the water side by side, and one thing I noticed right away is this one, the CUDA has a little bit more hole slap. And I think that's due to because it is a very flat surface on the bottom. The hole shape itself is very flat on the water, which gives it a lot of stability, but it doesn't cut through the water. It kind of rides on top of it. And we had some wind and chop so that chop is just hitting that flat surface on the bottom of the bow, and it does make a little bit of noise. Whether or not that's a big deal or a big issue, I don't know, but you could feel it in the seat of the boat and you could hear it. And I feel like while the Pike Pro and the Pike Series in general makes a little bit of hole slap, it's nowhere near as much as the CUDA Series. So if that's a big deal to you, that is something to consider. The other thing I would say is that the Pike Pro and Pike Series in general, I feel like tracks a little bit straighter. Now, I think that is because you actually have a nice sharp bow entry and you also have the same thing as far as how it exits. So the boat tends to cut through the water a little better. Again, doesn't have the hole slap where the CUDA is more sitting on top of the water like a stand up paddle board. And maybe that has something to do with it. It just seemed to lock into place, track a little bit straighter and be a little bit more efficient, but very close but maybe just a slight advantage. If you're in open water, 
I think the Pike or the Pike Pro is going to be the better and more efficient boat in that open water. Now the flip side of that is this is a sit inside and this is a sit on top and there are just general differences. It doesn't matter if we're talking about inflatable kayaks or if we're talking about hard shell kayaks between the two. And one of those differences is if you get water inside the seating area here and that's where it stays until you either pump it out or get out of the kayak and actually dump it out of the boat. Whereas the Cuda will take water on it and then it's just going to essentially drain off either to the front or back and it just has no area to really hold that water. But sit on sides, they do. I mean, it's like a bathtub. You're in it and the water can get in and they're not self-belling, whereas most sit on top kayaks are self-belling and the Cuda is really no different. If water splashes over, it's gonna drain off. Now, even though both of these boats are listed at 38 inches wide, you have a much wider standing area, or at least it feels like it's a lot wider on the Cuda. And I think that's because the tubes on the outside are a smaller diameter and the actual center deck is wider. So you can see that the seat has a little bit of space on each side between it and the tubes. And I feel like you can spread your feet out a little bit more, get a little bit wider stance. And that to me makes me feel a little more stable on the Cuda versus the Pike. The Pike being the same width has bigger tubes and a smaller area inside, which is almost the exact width of the seat. So your feet tend to have to be a little closer together and that can make it feel a little less stable even though they're the same width. Again, I've mentioned that they have the exact same seat. However, I do feel like you are sitting, or at least maybe it's just perceived that you're sitting a little higher on the Cuda off the water than you are because you do feel like you're down in something in the pike. And one advantage to that I'll say is when I have my gear, my fishing rods laid out in front of me and I'm fishing, I feel like they're more secure in the pike. So that is kind of an advantage to the pike series is that I feel like I'm down in it. My, my gear is down in it. It's not gonna wash over the side or fall over the side. Whereas if I lay something on top of the Cuda, even a fish, for example, if I'm trying to measure it, it could easily flop over the side because this is a very flat surface. Initially, I thought that the Cuda would have a lower profile on the water. And while these tubes are a little bit higher, it's pretty insignificant when we're talking about how much off the water one of these boats is versus the other. So I feel like as far as that goes, they're pretty close. And why that matters is because wind can be an issue when it comes to inflatable kayaks. They sit on top of the water, not in the water like a standard hard shell kayak does. So when the wind blows, there's not a lot of resistance and they tend to move very easily across the water. And that advantage I would have to give to the pike because I feel like it locks in a little bit better, probably due to that sharp entry point on the bow and just the simple fact that you're down in the boat maybe a little bit lower than you are on top of the Cuda. So what does all this mean? Honestly, for me, it would be a hard decision between these two boats. I feel like getting on and off the Cuda being a sit on top is a little bit easier. And maybe standing in it, I feel a little more stable because it has a wider footprint, at least in the deck area. But this boat also seems to track slightly better and be a little bit faster. So I really don't know which one is gonna be the best option for myself. And I really don't know if I could recommend one over the other to you guys. I like that this one's available in a pro package and it comes with some very basic accessories that I think you're gonna be adding to either one anyway. And right out of the gate, you can paddle this boat in that pro package. But if you're really just comparing the Pike or standard package to the Cuda, it's a pretty close tie for me. If anything, what I would say is if you're gonna be primarily fishing a little more flat water, open water, small lakes, ponds, that kind of thing, this boat's gonna be a little more efficient. It's gonna track straighter for you and be maybe a hair quicker. But if you're gonna be river fishing primarily and getting on and off the boat a lot, potentially going through some white water or some riffles where water could come into the cockpit or the sitting area of the boat, I think that the Cuda might be the better option for you. They are both great kayaks and great fishing kayaks. I really like fishing out of both of them. Personally, I like the color of this one, although the Pike is also available in this color, but not in the pro version. So if anything, I wish this Cuda was available in a pro version, just like the Pike. But other than that, you're gonna have to make that decision for yourself. Actually drop a line in the comments and let me know which one of these two kayaks 
you would choose and why, because it would be interesting to hear from you. I have a video again going over the full review of the CUDA 126 and a full review of the Pike Series and the Pike Pro from NRS, and I'll put a link to those in the description, and I'm also gonna be doing a video comparing these to the hard shell boat, as I mentioned before. So hopefully that'll help you make the right decision when it comes to choosing an inflatable watercraft or between an inflatable watercraft and a hard shell or more traditional fishing kayak. For more tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to the Road Trip Angler. And as always, thanks for watching. The Road Trip Angler would like to thank our global partners for helping support the mission to get people outside and on the water.